Hey Jules Bless Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So thanks for those who stood by me yesterday while I was kind of struggling um, with just sometimes my compulsive overeating and the struggle that goes with that gets to me. So I was a bit vulnerable in my share yesterday if you were here but I appreciated that because honestly there is a sense that there is this dark force, you know, known as dis-ease that really is haunting, taunting, nipping at my heels, stalking, right, at all times. And some days are harder than others. I'm, I'm so grateful to be on plan right now, but I just know that if I don't take time to reflect and, and to stay aware of that, that I can get really comfortable and fall right back into the nonsense of eating compulsively, gaining all my weight back, uh, plus more, because that's always part of the game, right? And so um, I really do want to just be reflecting for a moment. I think one thing which was should have been an eye-opener, okay, was when they came out with the COVID, <laughs> as, as if someone came out with it, right? When they introduced the COVID, forgive me, when COVID became an issue a year ago, right? Literally a year ago yesterday for all teachers all over the country who had March 13th written on their board for months. Um, but when COVID became a reality, let's just say, and one of the things that they recognized right away was that obese people, people with obesity, people suffering from obesity, okay, were at a higher risk than those who weren't in terms of contracting and most certainly dying from COVID. Straight up. Did it stop people from overeating? Absolutely not. Did most people gain weight? <laughs> By all accounts, yes. Many, many, many people gained weight during that year of COVID. And I certainly know it was something that I struggled with. Um, so what I knew for me was no matter how much people threatened me, no matter how much people told me that I was risking my health and my life and everything else, I just couldn't act on it. I was just in the thick of my disease and I just couldn't act on it. So I'm not suggesting that just because I'm reminding people that obesity still exists, that being obese is still a high risk factor towards an early death and many additional diseases, okay, as a result of that. Uh, it may not be enough to make a change in your life, but it certainly is mine. I mean, to be fair, I got to a point where I had so many ailments going on, okay, from the insanity of drowning in acid reflux to my kidney disease and being just shy of dialysis to my thyroid condition and taking medication to that to my bipolar disorder and my mood fluctuations and taking medication for that and like just so many things my asthma through the roof like I was going down fast my friends and I absolutely had to change or die and die miserably a really uncomfortable death okay nothing as simple as uh some of the other ways people exit the planet. I mean, for me, compulsive overeating and, and just engaging in all the disease of the standard American diet, eating food-like products is all a form of suicide and, and not an efficient one, right? It's the one that takes the longest. It's by far the most painful. And it's a miserable death, but it takes a while to get there for most people, right? It's not as immediate as some of the other ways, but there's no doubt that the intent is the same. It will result in death and sooner rather than later. So I'm going to share some statistics with you. This is from the World Health Organization, and it simply proclaims that obesity is a disease. You think? Obesity is defined by the World Health Organization. For short, it's WHO, capital H-W, forgive me, W-H-O. Um, as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. Abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. And they have a little um, number right there to look it up because it's saying may impair. And I appreciate that they're saying that because for a long time, and really even at 330 pounds and even more recently when I got back up to 281, I did not have the common things. I wasn't diabetic. I wasn't even pre-diabetic. 
I didn't have cholesterol, any form of cholesterol or high blood pressure. Like none of those were my gig, okay? But every doctor who saw me most certainly said, you're fat, so. <laughs> fat, so, is that where fat, so came from? Fat, so? You're fat, so let's put you on medication. And I was like, wait, wait, I know, I know I'm fat. But well, please, no, I don't need medication, honestly. Uh, check my numbers. And it was a shock to them that in those ways, I did not need medication, praise God. So I appreciate that it says may impair the health, okay? And then it reads, obesity is a chronic disease affecting more or less, they can't determine exactly, 100 million adults. That's more than three times, let's hear this. That's more than three times the number of adults with diabetes. So people just automatically think that they go hand in hand or that one leads to the other, when in fact, 100 million, more than two thirds those with diabetes are also obese. And that is not their story, that they're actually obese. How does obesity rank compared with some of the other health challenges in the United States? And these are stats for the United States. I indicated yesterday that I was gonna talk about Europe, but I was like, why? We don't live there, most of us. Shout out to a couple of you who do. Okay, so millions of adults have health challenges and obesity is one of the most prevalent. So about 75 million adults in the US have high blood pressure. Again, I have low blood pressure and even when I was heavy, that was true. So 75 million have high blood pressure, like diagnosed high blood pressure versus the 100 million with obesity. 78 million adults in the United States have high cholesterol to the point of being recommended medication. 78 million. Again, as opposed to the 100 million adults with obesity. So not all, this reminds me of when we were little and they had Venn diagrams. And I know that changed to thinking maps depending on how old you are. But with those Venn diagrams and the idea that yes, all of these people are obese, but no, not all these people have cholesterol. No, not all of these people have high blood pressure, right? Yeah. So it says about 40%, so important right here, about 40% of all cancers diagnosed in the United States have been associated with overweight and obesity. Because why? Because when you're obese, all your cells enlarge, all of your cells grow. The good cells grow, the bad cells grow, all cells overproduce to create that obesity, including cells like cancer. 13 cancers associated with excess weight and obesity. Are you ready? 13. Thyroid. I will tell you, my thyroid is now healed without medication. Thanks to things like dulse flakes, wakami seaweed, uh, my most recent that I just added, don't tell me, Irish sea moss, um, all of those kelp flakes, all of those, getting me that iodine that I needed and I no longer take medication. Please don't just stop your medication without doctor's help. But I was able to, and I have maintained for almost two years now at the proper levels without medication. I love that. Breast, I check mine. None, thank you, God. Liver, not my problem. Now, you know, the liver is the trash dump of the body, right? If your body isn't properly processing and getting rid of waste, no surprise that trash dump is becoming infected. The upper stomach, oh, God bless people. My brother Patrick died of uh, stomach cancer, which promptly spread to other parts of his body. It was painful and awful. The gallbladder, which people so readily remove, I really think God put it there with purpose, but okay. Pancreatic, nightmare of all time. My mother died of pancreatic cancer. Again, one that spread to all parts of the body. And so many famous people um, have died. That's one you really have to catch soon. Um, colorectal, so when they do those colonoscopies and the checks, the colorectal, I'm not surprised. Again, a lot of waste is stuck in that large intestine, small intestine in the colon. Um, just rotting, the dead meat rotting in our bodies, right? The uterine, the ovarian, the kidney. Thank you, God, for healing my kidneys at this time. I'm at, I'm at level three right now. I am going absolutely, wait, am I saying that right? Wait, I was at stage four, which is terrible. 
stage three, which was better, stage two, which is getting really good, and stage one. I'm high stage two, meaning I can almost see, wait a minute, is that, what? Stage one? <laughs> yes, I can just see stage one, and, and I will get there. I will absolutely get there. Multiple myeloma, adenocardiosinoma of the esophagus, why? Come on, I'll give you the count of three to figure it out. Why would we have adenocarcinoma of the esophagus? Two, one, bomb. Did someone say it? How about all the acid reflux? Again, tons of acid absolutely resting in the throat, especially when people are sleeping because of what they consumed and their obesity and nowhere for that acid to go, which starts with ulcerations which again, I have people in my life who have had, and I was very close. I sounded like a three pack a day smoker. And I kept saying to the doctor, I don't know what's wrong because I don't really have a sore throat, but how come I sound like this? Uh, gee, Miss McCants, maybe you have acid reflux because you're super fat right now and you're drowning. No, I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> I honestly would say, but I don't have that. It would pour out my nose. I could not breathe to save my life, but in the moment, oh my gosh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the courage to go back in the right direction. Thank you, God. So yes, and meningioma, which I'm not familiar, but anyway, if you're familiar with some of those, peace be with you. Don't panic. You can turn it around. Plant-based, vegan, raw vegan. Not the nonsense, not the vegans who are eating off the packaged chemicals. God's design, which of course is the perimeter of the store, the fruit, the vegetables, the healthy plant-based fats. Come on, there's plenty of room. Don't be thinking, well, Jill's looking so hot. She's probably the only one. There's no more, no, there's room for you too. You can be hot too. <laughs> Come on people, let's do this. Okay, so. Yeah, that's intense for sure, but I believe it and I totally understand it. So here's just some other information. Of course, I'll include this in the description of the video because that is the kind of person I am. So there's a lot of people getting treatment for obesity and sometimes it means that they actually end up getting surgery and stuff. That is not my story, luckily, but obesity affects every aspect of a person's life, seriously. And approximately 95 million adults, and like they said, 100 give or take, um, in the United States suffer from obesity. There's an emotional impact to obesity, and I can absolutely agree and proclaim to that. And, and it never stops haunting you, even as I've been losing weight, praise God. I still doubt that if I fall, I'll be able to get up. I, um, If I dare to bend down to the ground for something, I'm totally afraid that I will not have the strength. Do I have the strength? I should, I exercise all the time, I work out, I actually have like muscle, but there is a mindset that has to match the body, right? And another thing with that, like I was at Costco today and they, the way that they've done the lanes for social distancing, they have this one area for, um, what kind of checkout is that? Where you check yourself out? Not check yourself out, but. Is it just self-checkout? I guess. Anyway, um, it was lining up with mine. And these people had those gigantic carts. And I was up against the glass to show the girl my card. And somebody said, excuse me, to fit through. And all of a sudden, I panicked for a moment. Because I remembered when I was much heavier. Someone would say, please excuse me. And I thought I was moving. I thought I was sucking everything in. There was no distance of movement for that. <laughs> so tragic. So I thought, oh my gosh. I like pushed myself up against the glass or whatever that plastic is that everybody's using and prayed there'd be enough room. And the man said, oh, you're fine. There's plenty of room. I just wanted you to know I was passing behind you. And I thought, oh, God, there's plenty of room. Like, that is not something I hear, okay? It was awful. It, it just, it continues to really um, haunt people for years. And I think unless you change your mindset and get some reality checks, 
you may accidentally refulfill that picture and make yourself obese again to match it. I do not want to do that. So I've been daring. I told you guys a while back that I don't usually look at myself in the face. <laughs> like I'll go to the teacher's restroom at recess to do something and then I'll come back and a kid will say, Miss McKenzie, you have green ink on your cheek or your lipstick is on your teeth or, you know, didn't you clean that? And I'll think I was just in the restroom. How come I didn't see that? Because yes, I look in the mirror to wash my hands, but I don't look in the mirror. Like it's something I've never really done. And I'm trying to consciously actually see myself. Um, so that I don't keep just that fat image and not be able to see myself and not change or re-manifest that individual. I just can't do it. And I was telling you guys that the weight that I used to be able to lose, I can't do in my 50s the way I did before. I just can't. Um, it's a risk I can't take anymore. So according to the Obesity Medicine Association, there are 57 comorbidities. Wow, what is that word? C-O-M-O-R-B-I-D-I-T-I-E-S, comorbidities associated with obesity. Okay, if you're familiar, I'd love to know. Oh, is it a hyperlink? It might be a hyperlink. Including, let's see what they are. This might inform me as to what that is. Oh, why don't they just say side effects or characteristics? Comorbidities? <laughs> Okay, including migraines, depression, pseudotumor cerebri, praise God, no, obstructive sleep apnea. You know, sleep apnea was never my story, but it was certainly my husband's who would stop breathing an average of 28 times an hour is what they figured when he went to USC to, you know, do the sleep test or whatever. 28 times an hour? What? And, and I think that was the minimum. I think they said it was between 28 and 34 times an hour. Um, anyway, that's what's going on up here. Um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so COPD. Asthma, hi, yes. I mean, come on, Juliana. How didn't you know your migraines, your depression, and your asthma were obesity related? Because people don't talk about it. They just don't talk about it. For years, as heavy as I was, doctors didn't even mention weight loss. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Oh, that is happening in our children. I had a little third grader telling me that she was diagnosed with that. As a third grader, she, she didn't even seem that heavy. You know, it's a difference between baby fat and and, and becoming a preteen. And yeah, she actually had that. Type 2 diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. Of course, metabolic syndrome. Oh, Polycystic ovarian syndrome, think you know. Venus status disease. Mm, I don't know if it's a disease, but I do have some veins that are not happy with me. But again, I'm just hoping God's going to figure it out. Cardiovascular disease, praise God, no, but hypertension. Uh, dyslipidia, wait, dyslipidemia. Ooh, dyslipidemia. I don't know, but I've certainly had... Um, a lot of demias, <laughs> cancer, stress, urinary incontinence. Luckily, no, but I know a lot of people have trouble with that. A uh, knee and hip osteoarthritis and gout. I've been hearing a lot about gout lately. Mm. They're showing the heel for that specifically. So interesting. Okay, I can relate to a lot of those. Let's keep going with the happy news. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to make this two parts. All right, so one individual's thing said the three words that they would use to describe what it's like to live with obesity are that it's relentless, that it's overwhelming, and that there's shame based in it, which I've certainly talked about all of those. Absolutely, that it does haunt me, that if I'm not careful, I will repeat the behavior again and again. So it is absolutely relentless. There's no doubt that it's shame-based. You know, just um, because unlike people who have like type one diabetes, no one accuses them of bringing that on themselves, right? Um, even people with hypertension or high blood pressure, a lot of people don't bring that on themselves per se. But if you're heavy, you must have done it, right? Because I mean, right, calories in, calories out. 
But it's also like when people are talking about healing cancer and, and everyone's collecting money all the time. We're going to find the cure to cancer. It sounds a little impossible to me because there are so many factors that make up cancer, including diet, right? And like if diet, environment, so many things. And if you're not looking at the whole picture, me donating $20 to your magical cure probably will not be successful. And it's the same thing with obesity. It's not going to be very successful uh, to simply treat the weight when we know that it is a mental, spiritual, emotional let alone physical dis-ease. It has all the components. The standard American diet are literally designer foods that are designed to keep us obese. So is there some magical pill for it? How many times do people get their stomachs cut only to gain it all back and even more? We really always have to look at the whole picture, right? So people with obesity face significant stigma right? A lot of people put things on them. There's bias and stigma for people who are fat. Like people just assume they know how they got there. Again, sure, in the most simple way, it's overeating. There's no doubt. You've got to get those calories in you to get fat, right? Though the body may respond differently. I certainly understand that. Um, depending on what your history is and everything on whether your body works efficiently. And that goes back to the whole metabolic syndrome and everything like that. I'm game for that. But no matter what, you had to consume food to get there. Now, why you consumed it, why your body responded the way it did, why your body couldn't efficiently rid yourself of it despite your efforts and stuff, I get that that part varies. But rather than ever asking a backstory, people just look and decide what they think they know about a person, right? And that's across the board, not just with weight. So 66% weight bias in the United States has increased by 66% where people just decide you're fat, so you must be lazy, you must be non-disciplined, you must be insecure, like on and on, all the must be's. So weight bias can have consequences on those who are affected by the disease, including psychological, social, and of course, physical health. And no doubt, losing weight and maintaining weight loss is not easy. And of course, that's just an understatement of the year. You know, I was realizing recently that it's not that I can't lose weight because I was saying, God, I can't even lose weight. Well, yes, you can. Not only did you weigh 330 at one time and you don't anymore, you're under 200 pounds, but during that time you lost and gained 100 pounds and then now you've recently lost and gained 15 pounds. So we know that you have successfully lost, you know, at least 690 pounds in your adult life. So you certainly can lose weight. Are you equally talented at gaining it back? or exceeding that? Yes, I'm talented all around. I don't want to brag, but yes. Um, but I don't want to proclaim that I can't lose weight. I can. It's more about keeping it off, which is certainly my intention. So weight loss is often short term. Psychological responses to weight loss trigger weight regain of two thirds of the initial weight loss. Two thirds of the initial weight loss generally comes back. And of course, the other third, gain it all back and more. Healthcare professionals can play a vital role in helping patients lose weight and maintain that weight loss. And I'm sure that's true. I say things like Overeaters Anonymous, um, certainly any support group. The Tammy Raw Reset, those are people who are game on um, whether you need to lose your weight or you just want to be healthy and in being healthy inevitably will lose your weight. Nobody blames people who have hypertension for having high blood pressure, like I said, or a diabetic for being diabetic. But 75% of patients who experience obesity bias are more likely to eat more and or refuse diet as a coping mechanism because of the bias that they receive. And, and that could be siblings, right? Being mean and teasing them, right? Which certainly happens all the time. There, like, I remember as a child, and it's no offense to my belly button family, because, I mean, that's who I was born into, and I love them and would do anything for them. But 
I knew that what I experienced in my household, the challenges I experienced in my household, uh, would never, like life would never be as difficult as what I experienced in my own home. And, and that's across the board, whether that meant challenging me to be my best, the competitiveness of it, the life lessons that took place, or even the difficult challenges. I knew that if I could survive my childhood, I could survive anything that life brought my way. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, it may. So it says you need to approach your understanding of obesity and weight loss more as a disease and less as a morality judgment on the people. And that's tricky for me. It can be tricky for me because even I look at people and just go, oh, guy, stop your nonsense. <laughs> stop saying that you're trying your best. There's no way you're trying your best. Stop saying that um, you don't know why you're heavy. I know why you're heavy. I've lived it. I've been there. Like, I accidentally do that too. And I need to just be compassionate too. Are you kidding me? Like, Juliana, wait, wasn't that you a minute ago? Yes, yes. My footprint on the planet is very big from all the things I consumed. I know, I'm just telling you, sometimes even I struggle with it. Okay, in a recent study of professionals treating eating disorders, most felt confident and prepared to treat patients with obesity. That's what they said. Oh yeah, I can handle an obese patient, big deal. But, but, 56% of the patients observed negative comments. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the doctor's perspective. So 56% observed negative comments from colleagues about patients. 42% observed negative stereotypes towards the patients. And 29% observed attitudes towards the patients. And these are doctors talking, which I totally understand. I so understand because like I told you, every doctor just presumed I had everything because I was fat and I didn't. It just wasn't true for me. So people with obesity in the United States have higher health care costs than those of normal weight. With increased medical spending, obesity can become an economic burden on both public and private payers, of course. So the, the increased cost because of obesity is 27% for physician visits and outpatient costs. 46% for inpatient costs and 80% spending on prescription drugs for all those secondary ailments like I spoke of. The World Health Organization defines overweight as a BMI greater than or equal to 25. I am so not there. I think I'm literally at 31 right now. While obesity is defined as a BMI greater than or equal to 30. Overweight is equal to 25 or more and obesity is 30, yeah, of course. Healthcare costs associated with obesity are mostly due to the treatment of obesity-related cormobidides. What a word. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I know this is running long, you guys. So I'm gonna share some other statistics tomorrow, but it's something I need to revisit, especially at this part of my walk, right? Because yes, I'm letting weight go. I'm so happy to finally confidently be in the 190s. Like for a minute there, I kept going back up to two, kept going up to two. I'm confidently in the 190s. I'm about to slip into the 180s. Um, I'm hoping to have the grace to do that soon. And I don't want to play the game of back to 90, back to, no. I just want to continue on my walk. But that's to remind myself that I do suffer from a disease. I do suffer from a mindset of obesity. I do suffer from the fear related to being extremely obese and still having a mindset that thinks I'm there. And so I need to talk about this. But anyway, thanks for letting me. Thanks for stopping by Jules Bless Vegan. I'm getting there, people, one day at a time. This was another clean day, praise God. I'd love to know in the comments below how you're doing. Like, if you like, join us if you haven't, subscribe. And until we talk again, people, make best choices for you. You know, because that's the beginning of wellness, accepting you where you are. And until we talk again, best of all, know that you're blessed.